I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In today's Inkscape tutorial, I wanna show you the basics of logo design. If you follow along, you'll end up with this high contrast logo that we'll make together. Today's video partner is Mint Mobile, premium wireless for as low as $15 a month, and it's easy to make the switch. Just like each of these steps is gonna be easy. I'll show you how you can wrap text around a circle, We'll take this anchor graphic from the public domain and create a vector asset out of it that we can use. And I'll show you a cool feature called pattern along path where this rope circle on the outer edge is actually pulled from the rope on the anchor graphic. And we'll actually use paint bucket again too. So let's begin. We'll start by setting up our page. Go to file, document properties, on the pop-up menu, we want to be on format A4. It's so we'll all be on the same page, the same scale. Because we're doing a circular design, it'll help with the process if we make a perfect center that we can visualize. So go to Extensions, Render, Guides Creator. In the pop-up, you want to be on Columns 2, Rows 2, Apply. And there's the guides that pop up. That's what we want to have on your page. Last part of the setup over here, this magnet with a lightning, that is snapping. Enable snapping by clicking on that. Also hit the triangle. You want to make sure for this exercise you have on the bottom guidelines selected. Also other points, object midpoints, and object rotation centers. Now we can begin. Let's go to the Create Circles tool. And if you hold Shift and Control, you can draw open a perfect circle. Looks like I have a white fill and a black stroke here. Go to Object, Fill and Stroke. This will pull up your Fill and Stroke menu so we can change the colors. On the Fill tab, let's X out of it so it has no color on the inside. And for Stroke, I brought these colors in here. Why don't we do blue today? Hitting the eyedropper lets me choose the preset blue, and I'll have these color codes in the description. If I wanna make the thickness a little thicker, go to stroke style. It says with 0.7 millimeters, let's make it an even one. Now here's where the snapping comes in. If I go to my selector tool, I can drag it towards the center of the page, and you see that it clicks right in. Scale it down a bit, and we'll do control D, which duplicates it, because I'm gonna cheat and have another circle slightly in. But for this one, we'll do 0.5 millimeters, maybe 0.75. This is the basic structure of our design and we can build from here. I've got the inner one selected. I'll do control D again to duplicate that one. And let's bring this in very slightly. I wanna add a fill. Click over to the fill tab, enable the flat color. We'll do eyedropper the blue. Here's a quick trick if I wanna slice this circle in half without using the different path functions. With it selected, go back to the circle tool and this circle right here, I can click on it and open up the circle like a Pac-Man or just take it down to half. Let's go ahead and lock that in on path. Go to object to path. And I will say, if you forget that you did this step, the next time you go to Inkscape and you use the circle tool, You'll make a circle, it'll be half and you'll go crazy. If that ever happens to you up in the modification area, you can click on this icon and make it a whole circle. All right, let's bring in that anchor graphic. It's coming from the public domain. I'll have the link in the description. I got it from rawpixel.com. It's a PNG image, so I can't modify it too much as a vector. Let's make it into a vector asset. First, reduce the size a little bit. This is one of the best features in Inkscape. Go to Path, Trace Bitmap. In the menu, you want to be on the Single Scan tab and Detection Mode Brightness Cutoff. What Trace Bitmap does, it looks at the image and it says, I'll create a vector based on this. Here's the preview. In this case, the default 0.45 works perfectly. Speckle, Smooth Corner, Optimize, All Selected. I have several other tutorials on this channel if you want to get into the real details about Trace Bitmap and what it can do. For now, just hit Apply. And this is what you get looks exactly the same, but instead of it being a PNG, which we can delete now, this is a vector, so I can change the colors on the fly. And if I hit Edit Paths by Node, you can see that Inkscape created this design by making lots of little nodes, which in turn allows us to do some pretty cool things with it. First, let's make it the same color as our design. We can scale it down and see where it falls. Actually, why don't we change it to something so we can see where it's gonna go. 
I want to leave space for the words, so we'll bring it down to about here. Originally, when I was sketching up this logo for the tutorial, I had the anchor just float in there solid, but I wanted the high contrast to be a key feature in the design because I think it aids in communication. And if you want to save money communicating, we should talk about our partner in today's video, Mint Mobile. So they hooked us up with a new line for our kids. I have a seven-year-old and a three-year-old, and I was curious to see if they noticed a difference in streaming quality and they didn't. Mint Mobile is fast. They offer premium wireless service for as low as $15 a month and you don't have to sacrifice coverage, speed, or data. And all Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk, text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspots. This has been huge for the kids in the car. I was worried there might be some dead spots around town, but it's been working great. And if they're happy, we're happy. Switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their digital eSIM cards, you can sign up and activate immediately right from your phone. The whole process took about 15 minutes. And if you get stuck, Mint has great customer service to help you get it done. So if you want reliable coverage and fast data at a fraction of the cost, go to mintmobile.com slash iron echo. Now I don't own a British football team like Ryan Reynolds but I do coach town soccer. So take it from me, make the switch. Thank you, Mint Mobile. Let's get back to it. Having this anchor in a vector format lets me do this particular move that I want to make. I want to stamp out on the bottom half here. I want this to actually be negative space. So I want this anchor to be gone and I want this part to turn blue. If you want to split something very simply like this, there's a cool path effect. Go up to path path effects the sidebar menu pops open hit the plus at the bottom to add the path effect you're going to get this path effects menu and you want to find one called slice here it is right here slice click that the default will have it be on a vertical which we don't want so instead click on horizontal it's going to naturally cut it right in half perfectly and we want it to be at this line so go to edit paths by node if you zoom in, you'll see this tiny little diamond that lets you control where the slice happens. To get rid of all this business, I'll go back to a regular selector tool and that's it. It's now in two parts, the top half and the bottom. I'll do control Z. I want them to be perfectly where they were. Top one, very simple. I can now change the color to the blue, but I want to lock it in as its own independent piece. So you've got to go back up to path object to path that removes the path effect and it also frees up the bottom part which now lets me select it hold shift select the half circle i can go to path difference and it looks all messed up don't worry that's just because the default will take a long stroke information so to fix it up and make it look nice and clean go up to stroke stroke paint x out of that and there you go you've got your two halves I want to make the rope perimeter now and we'll use an element from the rope itself. I should have actually kept that vector asset we made. If you need to make another one, go ahead and do that. So this part right here, let's grab this rope link just like that. If I double click on it, or if you hit edit paths by node, you can try and select just those nodes. It's a little bit tricky. This is an example where you can use good old paint bucket. So if I click on the paint bucket tool, your default might be visible colors, threshold 25. Change the fill by to alpha. I can see the paint bucket graphic shows blue. It's gonna dump out blue. That's based on whatever the last fill and stroke thing you had set. And I'm gonna click right over the part that I want. And that's it. I just got the vector asset I need. Now I can delete this thing. And the path effect we're going to use is called pattern along path. It does exactly what it sounds like. So first, let's make the path that will act as a guide. I'll open up a circle. This one will take the fill off. And for stroke, we'll do green because it's going to be a throwaway. Let's make it bigger. And it should click right into the center right there. This will be our guide. Now we can modify our rope link. First, I want to make it wider and straighten it back out. Click on your guide circle that you made. Go to path, path effects. Add a path effect by hitting the plus and look for pattern along path. Click on the rope part that you want to use. Right click it and do copy. That puts it on the clipboard. Now you can go back to your guide circle and under pattern source, you want the far right link path to clipboard. But before you click on it under pattern copies, let's do repeated stretched. That's going to repeat this all the way around until it completes. Now I'll click on the link to clipboard. It actually adapted that green. Let's change the fill and stroke on that. So fill and stroke menu, stroke off, fill, 
we'll do that blue. Go back to the path effects menu. We can change the spacing to get it tighter together so it looks more like rope by adjusting this. But first I wanna hold shift and control and get, turn snapping off if it does that. Shift and control and get it to be right about here is where I want it to sit. Now let's get the spacing right. Right down here, spacing, we'll try negative four. It's better, but we'll do negative six. Right there, you can play with it some more, but you can see it's a pretty powerful tool that lets you make a repeated pattern along a path. I like how this could actually be a template now for lots of different designs. I'm gonna do Wellfleet, Wellfleet, Massachusetts, beautiful spot on Cape Cod. We're gonna write Wellfleet right here. Another guide circle is needed. We use this green guide circle, snapping back on so it clicks into place right there. And I'm gonna size it so I don't write on top of the top of the anchor. You can select the Create and Edit Text tool, Wellfleet but I don't wanna use this font. Instead, I'll highlight it and we'll choose one called Babis Neue. Enter. I like this font because it's tall and if I add some spacing up here in spacing, it be 35, it gives a nice stretched effect. I can already tell it's gonna be way too big. Why don't we start with 100 and go from there? The way it works to wrap the text around a circle, you have to have your text like this. Hold Shift, collect your guide circle, then go to Text, put on path and it is curved around the circle upside down. So we're gonna click off of everything. Just grab the circle, hit it twice until you get the turning handles and you can put it into place. Now you can change the font just like it was straight across normal. Try 75. 75 is a better size. Spacing's too much. Up to spacing, we'll try 25. There you go. Visually, if you wanna be real accurate, you can bring down another guideline. Why don't we change the color while we're here? I just tweaked it off camera ever so slightly. The reason is, once you have it the way you want it, you need to lock it in. So I have it selected, I'll go to Path, Object to Path. Now I can get rid of this guide circle and it won't affect the text anymore. That's how you curve the text over the top like this. What if you want it to go down here? It's very simple, just one extra step. Go back to text, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, all crunched up like that. We'll change the spacing to maybe 10. A new guide circle. This one, I want it to sit inside here, so let's make it larger. Grab the text, shift, grab the guide circle. They're both selected. Text, put on path. And it's going the wrong way until you go to object, flip vertical. When you're this deep in the design, if it's having trouble snapping, click off of everything. Just grab the guide circle, then go to object, align and distribute. This will give you the align and distribute menu. You can change it relative to page, relative to page, center vertically, center horizontally. And wherever the guide circle goes, so does the text because they're connected. Now I can double click, get the handles and bring my text down. It's not gonna be yellow, I just change it so it's easier to see what's happening. Let's lock it in, go to path, object to path. Now I can get rid of the guide circle. And if I change this to white, that's fine right now, but I want this graphic to actually be able to be placed on other backgrounds. So I want this to actually be negative space. I wanna punch it out of this bottom bowl, just like we did the anchor. Text is funny when using path functions. First, you have to take it and ungroup it. So object, ungroup. So each one of them is its own thing. Then you have to combine it, path, combine. So that puts it all into one path and will allow me to hold shift and get this bottom bowl with both selected, go to path difference. There you go. Now, if you had something underneath on the bottom, for example, the entire design is one color with negative space, but you don't want too much negative space. I think I'll put the dates here, the date of incorporation, 1763. Then group the whole thing. Actually just <laughs> forgot. Remember these path effects, if you don't lock them in, you see my path effect is still there? Path, object to path. Now I can group everything together and if I resize, it's not gonna affect anything. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you to Mint Mobile and we'll see you next time.